Hello and welcome to Just Vintage Crochet and today we are going to take a trip back to the golden era of Hollywood. It's giving me Joan Crawford, Rita Hayworth, Anne Bancroft, and even, I'd go so far as to even say Gloria Swanson, even though she's not necessarily part of the 1940s Hollywood royalty era. But yeah, when I saw this, I thought to myself, I have to have it. I have to make it. I have to show you guys. So here we go. The materials that we need for this. <clears throat> it basically says to use, you know, two pieces of thread, two strands of thread together or baby wool. I got super excited. So I am going to use this that you guys have seen me use a, about a dozen times on here the Bernat baby sport in white of course and it looks really big all up close to the camera like that but it is just a sport weight as you can see and it doesn't give a hook size at all so the uh, size hook that this particular yarn calls for is a four millimeter hook so let's get right into this because this looks really really easy but so beautiful come on okay guys let's get into it okay so before we actually get started on the pattern this is I have already been working I've already actually showed you how to start it and I've already given you most of the instructions already so you're seeing this um, after before back back to the future okay so i'm about to show you that we need to make this with a four millimeter i'm not liking it with a four millimeter it's quite stiff it's curling but curling the wrong way and it's quite stiff as you can see it's just very stiff and when you look at the holes they're a lot bigger than the ones i'm making if you look there's the holes in the pattern and here's the holes i'm making it's just these ones are bigger. So I'm going to recommend a 4.5 millimeter hook. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and undo this and start over again with a 4.5 millimeter. Um, so when you see me saying make use a four millimeter, no, 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 use a 4.5. <laughs> hey, I'm making this pattern for the first time along with you. So I am learning too. So here we go. I'm going to start this over with a 4.5. Now here is future me or past me with your instructions. Okay, so the pattern calls for us to chain four and form a ring. I went with a magic circle. So you can chain four and form a ring if you don't like to work magic circles. I'm gonna work a magic circle because we have to put 18 single crochet into that chain four ring. And I thought, well, a magic circle would make that whole job just a little bit easier. So we're gonna work 18 single crochet into the ring and then join into your first single crochet with a slip stitch. I will be right back. Okay, so now we join into the first single crochet, form a ring. I'm gonna just tighten that up a little bit, but not all the way. Now we are to chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and into the same stitch that we joined our slip stitch into, we work two double crochet. One and two. And if you do decide to pick up this pattern, which there will be a link in the description box, this is a US written pattern. So it will be written in all US terms. Okay, now we chain one, and skip the first yarn over because we're going to work in double crochets. Skip the first single crochet and in the next one over, work a double, chain one, and skip the next, work a double crochet. So now we have two double crochets separated by a chain one. Chain one, now we're going to work another corner. This was our first partial corner made. Now we're gonna work a full corner. So chain one, skip the next stitch, and in the next one over, work two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. Chain two, and two double crochet. Now we are making a triangle here, not a square. Chain one, and repeat everything we did here. So what we want basically is a chain one, a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet, and a chain one between the corners. 
for this first row. So here we go, I have my chain one. That's my first stitch right there, so skip that. And in the next stitch over, work my double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet. Now I have two double crochets worked. Chain one, skip one, and work our next corner. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, chain two, and two doubles. So I'm going to stretch that out so you can visually see how it needs to look between the corners, just like this. So here's one corner, I'm gonna just cover both the corners up. You need to have this between both corners. Chain, a double, a chain, a double, and a chain, okay? So we're gonna repeat that one more time, a chain, skip, make a double, a chain, skip the next, make a double. Now we have our two doubles, we just need a chain. Skip, now this is called a false stitch here. Let me get my little pointer. Typically we avoid of working in the false stitch. This is a false stitch. This time we're actually going to work it so that we can create this right here. So this is where you're gonna work your last double crochet. And every time we work the double crochet round, you will end it like this, where you work a double crochet into your false stitch. And then without chaining, count three, one, two, three chains up, and slip stitch. And there we have our triangle. Now, slip stitch into the chain one space chain one and work one single crochet plus chain one, one single crochet. Now work one single crochet and if you ever need to pull this aside so you can catch the top of your next stitch over here because sometimes it likes to get buried under the single crochet. Work a single crochet into the top of every double crochet and into every chain one space until the next corner. So this we're going to refer to as our single crochet round. Now, this whole pattern is a two round repeat. Very, very easy. It's so glamorous in my opinion. Okay, now we've made our way over to our next corner where we're going to work a single crochet. Chain one, I like to work that chain one kind of loose, and then a single crochet, and right here, we start working single crochets across the board to the top of every double crochet and into every chain one space. There we go. Next corner gets a single crochet, a loose chain one and a single crochet. And we just commence to work in our single crochets across. There we go. Now, that's your chain three right there. We just basically worked into the top of that chain three. Now slip stitch into your starting single crochet. Okay, and now you're gonna slip stitch your way over into that chain one space, and we're gonna start working our double crochet row. And this is going to be the official two row repeat. We are going to repeat row three, which is the single crochet row, and row four, which is gonna be a repeat of our double crochet row. So we chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and we've already created our false stitch. Right here is our false stitch that we're going to end this round in. So with our chain five, just like we did before, into that same chain one space, we work two double crochet, one and two. Now, obviously this is going to grow out so you're just gonna match the formula of, remember this is gonna be your first stitch here, don't let it get drowned by this. You're going to chain one, skip your first stitch, and in the next stitch over, 
work a double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work one. Chain one, skip one, work one. All the way to the other corner, when you get to the other corner, into that chain one space right there, kind of, kind of buried in there, but right here is your chain one space. Don't let it be confused with that when you open it up because that's actually your single crochet right there. It's kind of mashed in, you'll see a little bar right next to where your chain one space is because that's actually your chain one space right there. So when you get to your next chain one space, you will work two doubles, chain two, two doubles. So here we go. Skip one and work one. Chain one, skip one, work one. That's kind of the cadence I keep in my head. <laughs> when we get up to the next corner, you're gonna chain one, skip that single crochet of the corner and right into the chain one space, start working your two double crochets chain two and two double crochets one and two now the next single crochet over kind of gets buried a little bit chain one skip that single crochet and then the next one after that just continue so this is going to be the repeat all the way around and you will continue to repeat these two rows where you have your double crochet row followed by your single crochet row until the piece measures 30 inches. You can see here until repeat third and fourth rounds alternately until piece measures 30 inches from corner to corner along one edge. So when we can measure from one corner to the next 30 inches, stop and come back and we will do the finishing touches of the ruffles and the cord and the tassels okay so just keep on repeating this I'll go ahead and finish this whole round with you and I'll start the next single crochet round with you that way you are completely confident in what it is you need to do so here we go we're gonna skip one and work one chain one skip one work one skip work double crochet chain skip work double crochet chain one skip that last single crochet there and right there is my chain one space so i'm going to work my two doubles chain two and two doubles chain one here we go that's my first single crochet so i'll skip that and in the next one over chain one skip one and then the next one over there we go skip and skip and now we will skip this last stitch and into our fall stitch so we're gonna skip this last stitch and right next to it into our false stitch, we're gonna work our last double crochet to complete that first corner right there. Then without chaining, just count one, two, and three and join with the slip stitch. Now we slip stitch our way over into the chain two space, chain one, one single crochet, a nice loose chain one, and then another single crochet. The reason I say loose is because it will make finding your chain one space a lot easier if you form it loosely. Now just start working single crochets in every stitch and every chain one space all the way around, minding the corners that you work a single crochet, a chain one and a single crochet in all of your chain two corners. And that's it, easy peasy. Such a fun and unique item. And it really does just give that Hollywood glam. I love it. I'm obsessed. As soon as I saw it, it's just like everything needs to stop. I must make this. I must make this now. <laughs> so 
single crochet, loose chain one, and single crochet, and here we go. All the way around. And it's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. And if nothing else, it can just be a triangle shawl. There we go. One and two. Now into the chain two space. Single crochet. That was a little, little loose on that single. There we go. Nice loose chain one though. Single crochet. I'll finish this last round up with you and then I will leave you to it because I feel like you guys have this by now. It's just that easy of a pattern. Oops, I almost dropped the whole ball down. <laughs> there we go, almost done. Of course, these rounds are going to take longer and longer to complete as it grows because 30 inches, it's about a foot and a, no, it's about just over two feet. Okay, there we go. Get in there. Okay, and now we slip stitch into our starting single crochet. Slip stitch over into our chain one space right here. Chain five, one, two, three, four, five. That chain five counts as your first double crochet plus chain two. And work two double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work a double crochet. And that's it. So I will be back whenever I have achieved from corner to corner, 30 inches. I'll see you then. Okay, so I have reached my 30 inches across one whole edge. Now what we're going to do, I've already joined into my first single crochet here. So just chain one and make another single crochet and chain four. One, two, three, four. Jump over to the very next single crochet over. And that's going to be right here and work a single crochet. Chain four, one, two, three, four, and into the very next single crochet, work a single crochet, and repeat, one, two, three, four. So we're gonna work chain fours and a single crochet into the next stitch over all the way around, just like this. We're not skipping any stitches. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There we go. So just work this all the way around. When you get to your corners, you'll just work your single crochet, chain four, single crochet, and keep on going. I will be right back. So here I've made it all the way around to the end. Let me redo that chain four again. So I have worked my last single crochet. Now chain four and Right up here, you have your first loop. Go ahead and work a single crochet into that loop. And I am going to mark this one as this is where I'm gonna slip stitch when we come back around. Okay, now chain four, three, four, and into the next loop over, which should be right lined up with the point of, well, the point. <laughs> Uh, we're going to work three loops in this point. So one single crochet, one, two, three, four, and all into the same loop, we're gonna make three total loops. There's one loop, one, two, three, four chains, come down and work a single crochet, one, two, three, four chains, and come down and work one more single crochet. Now we're going to work one loop or one single one one chain four plus single crochet into the next five spaces or six spaces either way we want six loops between these this is what they are calling the three loop group 
So we're not gonna have three loop group the whole way, <laughs> say that five times fast, but just every six loops. So here we go, one, two, three, four. Next chain over, we make a single crochet. Now that is one independent loop. One, two, three, four. That's two. One, two, three, four. That's three. One, two, three, four. That's four. One, two, three, four. Five. And one, two, three, four, six. Now let's just make sure. Here is our three loop group one two three right here so we have one two three four five and six okay so now we actually do that five times because this is going to create a loop so yes forgive me do that five times so one two three four five loops this will make the sixth loop but now we're going to do our three loop group here so that's one, two, three, four. One, one, two, three, four. Two, and one, two, three, four chains. Back down, and that's three. So yes, see this makes, this makes the sixth loop. So forgive me. So just bear that in mind. You'll do it five times because this will make, whenever you go to make your three loop group, you're automatically gonna make your sixth loop. So let's go over that just one more time. So chain four, one, two, three, four, and we're gonna actually make five loops intending to make six before we make this deal again. So here we go. One, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, and five. So there is our, let's just call it a clover because you know, it kind of looks like a little clover. So let's call it a clover just to keep it simple because I don't want to keep saying three loop group. <laughs> so here's our clover and one, two, three, four, five. Now we chain four and we make our clover, but by making the clover, we are forced to make our sixth loop in this space here. So there you go. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, that's two. And into the same space, that's three, making our little clover. And we have between each clover, one, two, three, four, five, six loops. Okay, so just keep repeating this all the way around. Two, three, four chains. And then do this five total times and make another clover. Okay, I don't know if there's gonna be, if it's gonna work out to where there's a clover on each of the points, but if you want one on each of the points, just make one on each of the points. It's fine, really, truly, no one's gonna notice, but if you like that look, go for it. I think I might. I'll let you know whenever I get to the end how that works out. Or actually, what I'll do is when I get to my next point, we'll see where I'm at and how it works out. Yeah, we'll see how it works out. Okay, so for me, it seems to be working out exactly the way I was hoping, where you can see here is my center, and there is my point, and I'm about to do my little clover. So here I have the last clover I made, and then one, two, three, four, five, and so here's where I'm going to put my next clover. So that worked out pretty good for me. Uh, and if it doesn't work out for you, maybe just do one extra loop if you need it, and put your Put your clover in the point if that's what you want, because that's what I want. I wanted the clovers to be in the points, like that. I like the way it looks. Okay, I will be right back. I'm going to finish this up, and then we're going to see how it looks on Millie. Oh, now, I forgot. We have to, before we put this on Millie, we have to make the cord first. So I'm going to opt for just a simple single crochet cord. 
Um, reason being, I'm not a big fan of their cord. I tried working another cord, but it was too thick. So their cord is one of those twisted cords. I'd made one of these before. Likely, I don't like them because I don't know how to make them very well. I'm just keeping it real with you. So it wants you to cut four strands, each 50 inches long, twist tightly, then double the twist strands and give them a second twist in the opposite direction, not loose end. Then this is how you're going to figure out where you need to put the cord once you've made it around the neck. So it says at this point, place the fascinator on the head with a point to the front, just like you see here. Put a pin in the fascinator at the base of back of neck and run the cord in and out of the hole straight across in line with the pin. So you'll use the pin or a stitch marker to basically decide at which point at the back of the neck do you want your cord to start and then just run it through trying to keep in line as straight as you possibly can with the holes that we have here. And that's where you're going to run your cord through. Of course, I'll show you how I do mine. But in the meantime, I'm just working, this is just a quick little sample to show you, a boring, simple little single crochet cord um, their cord doesn't look very, very big, and yeah, I'm not a big fan of those twist cords. Uh, maybe you guys know how to do it. Go for it. I am not a big fan. So I don't know how many chains I'm going to make. I don't know how long I'm going to make this because they call for 50 inches, but that's obviously going to shrink in size as you twist and then twist again. So I don't know. I'm just going to make chains and when I feel like it's long enough I will stop and I will measure it out and show you guys how long I am making mine and then I will show you how I'm going to uh, size it up for Millie and then we will work on the tassel. Okay so I went with 176 chains because I want 175 stitches. I measured it out and it's 48 inches and I will be working back bump single crochet. That way I have a nice flat line on both sides, flat edge on both sides. So I'm just gonna work single crochets all the way to the end. Then I will, we'll go ahead and make the tassels. Well, no, we have to, I think we have to do the tassels after we figure out where on our garment that the um, cord needs to go because you can't you can't feed the tassels through they have to go on last so I think we will make those last but there we go there I have them flat on both sides so it's kind of even on both sides all right so I'm just gonna work these 175 single crochet and I will be right back and we will get it pinned onto Millie Okay, so you can see back here, it's now shaped like a hood. I've got the cord just sitting back there, but this is how we're going to find where we need to feed the cord in. So I have my stitch marker, so what you'll wanna do is put this on you. Here's how she looks in the front, just a little bit. I have it kind of opened up, so you can see, well, you'll see better whenever it's not so up close. But anyways, this is the important part. So just, come down underneath. I like this right here. So this is where I'm gonna put my stitch marker, right here. There we go. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna feed my cord all the way through, see the line? Just do your best to follow that line. There it is right there, right there. So just do your best to follow the line all the way okay go so now it's all weaved in back here and we came around this way and then I did not come all the way to the front and that is because I want it to be like this you know I want it to be open now she's kind of a mess right now because her wig kept falling off <laughs> while trying to do this but on both sides I came to about three or four squares before the very very edge and so whenever I tie it it will I don't know what my thinking was but it's just that it will be more open around the face there 
Okay, so for the tassel portion here, it says to wind yarn 30 times around fingers of left hand, then cut the yarn. Slip strands off fingers and pass a double piece of yarn through the strands and tie at the top. Wind yarn several times around near the top and tie cut loose ends. Very easy, so let's do that really, really quick. So left hand and let's wrap 30 times. I'll be back whenever I get done with 30 wraps. There is our 30 wraps. I'm gonna cut, slip off. Now let's take a long strand here and it did say a double strand, pass a double piece of yarn. Okay, so we'll double it up. So we'll double this up, tie it up. Now I should have cut that much longer. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna use this double strand to secure it to the end of the cord. So let me get another strand, here we go. All right. Lay it flat right there. Come down just a little bit. Come up just a little bit and tie. Then flip it over and tie again. And then we'll do it one more time. And then I'll tuck it down in there. Come down to the front, tie one more time. Grab your darning needle and we're gonna shove these down the center. This darning needle may be too big, I'm not sure. But what you'll wanna do is just pick a spot and shove it right down the center there. And that's it. And then I'm gonna use these strands right here to secure it to the end of the cord. But now we can just cut these and of course, I will even them out off camera. There we go. Make sure that we got them all. Yeah, we got some long and some short, but I will even that out off camera. But that's how you're gonna make the tassels. So make two of these. Here she is. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my gosh, I love it so much. It is so, so pretty. Let me flip her around so you can see the back. Here is the back and it looks like a, a hood slash snood, does it not? <laughs> it is so perfect. Oh, I love it so much. There we are. 